A new report from Georgetown University analyzes public spending and recommends innovative ways to increase effectiveness by reducing costs. For the next few minutes, we'll discuss this very important topic. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum, and I'm joined today by Sonal Shaw, Executive Director of the Beck Center for Social Impact and Innovation at Georgetown University. So now, welcome to the program. Robert, it's great to be here. So, you know, it's interesting because we always want, as taxpayers, as public officials uh, that, that follow all of this, we want our money to be spent wisely. That's easier said than done. Why is that the case? You know, this report really is about how do we pay for outcomes? We always talk about the number of people served, but we never ask whether we got to a result. Did the student get... Uh, did they learn? Are they graduating from high school? Did their health get better? So this report is really about how do we s reset the parameters of what success looks like as opposed to number of people served to the number of s problems solved. Is that a cultural thing that we just simply don't ask those type of questions? Is it a, wh why do we ask those type of questions? Two parts. One, our funding is largely based on uh, compliance. Mm -hmm. So did you spend the dollars properly? Have you spent it in the appropriate places? So it's the solution, not the process. Right. And we pay for the process. We don't pay for the solution. Right. What we're talking about here is how do you pay for the solution and not the process. So let, give us some highlights from the, the report. So two particular ones I'd really like to highlight. Tennessee, the state of Tennessee, uh, really wanted to reduce uh, ch children. They realized that when children were moved into homes quickly, um, they had less interaction with the law and other places. So they set a very simple goal. We've got to move children from foster care to homes, permanent homes, quickly. And when they made that uh, process clear, everybody was able to follow through, and it was an easier process to go through, and then the, the, the outcome was clear. We want to move children. We want to reduce the amount of time a child is in foster care to getting into a permanent So home. is it as simple as keeping it very short and very simple and having the objective be very clear so that everyone understands it? Simple metrics so everybody from the providers to the government to everybody in between knows what to do. So is it a process that we overthink things sometimes? We overcomplicate things sometimes. I see. And rather than overcomplicating it, reminding everybody why we're doing what we're doing and what we're doing it so for. So now you mentioned there was a second recommendation or highlight. What is that? Second one is Australia. They they have an employment services agreement. And the second one, they were able to reduce employment services and keep people in jobs longer from $16,000 per person to $3,500 per person. Wow. Again, very simply by realigning incentives to saying what we want is whoever gets employment services stays in a job. I remember when I was in college, Vice President Al Gore uh, said we want to reinvent government. We want to make sure that government is smarter, it's leaner, it's much more efficient. And you fast forward to today, there are a lot of people out there that says when you take a look at the Veterans Affairs scandal or, you know, the rollout of healthcare.gov, a little bumpy there. Um, as, a, as a society, have we gotten better at becoming more efficient or are we kind of back to ground zero? So We've done both. In some cases, we've become more efficient and we've done it well. So if you look at veterans' homelessness, we've actually made a huge impact in reducing veterans' homelessness across the country. Um, and that's because the incentives have been aligned and done that. In other cases, what we've done is we've just complicated from state to level, state to district to local. Um, we, need to, we need to be more innovative in our approach. And we've got to have a little bit of flexibility to say, if we've learned something and it's not working, to be able to say, OK, let's figure out what is working right. and let's move quickly so in other words, to best practices. So that, best practices. And whether that's from Tennessee, whether that's from exactly. whatever the case may be, exactly. taking those best cases is and moving them somewhere else. Exactly. And learning from them to apply them quickly. 30 seconds left. Do you think governors, mayors, city council people will take this report and says, aha, this is the blueprint, blueprint, this is how we're going to move forward? It's exactly what we want to happen. City council members, governors, mayors, districts to really take this report and saying, I can apply these design principles even in my cities, my states, my counties, and we can make this happen. The best way to achieve success is by doing it. How realistic do you think governors and other municipalities would do this? We recently had a conference at Georgetown University, and in that conference we had cities, states, and, and uh, officials there, and they were all looking to apply this because as budgets get tighter, we need to do something. All right, to be determined. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. It's great to be here, Robert. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.